Rutherford Falls, in a nutshell, is... It's a small northeastern town with some kind of uh, colonial pride that exists on the border of the fictional Minashanka Reservation. The communities interact with each other, and they work together, and they have conflicts as well. The show kind of dives into the politics behind whose land is whose and who founded the town. I think it is something where it's like there's a wonderful small town comedy, but within that there's incredible themes of revisionist history and uh, native joy and uh, reclaiming identity and redefining identity. Uh, it's a really, it, it, there's a lot of complex themes, uh, but that just gets delivered in a palatable, lighthearted, hilarious and heartfelt comedy. A bunch of years ago, Lawrence Rutherford wrote and signed a legally binding agreement with the Minnesonka. That's why this town exists. That's why all of you exist. Okay? Lawrence Rutherford is our forefather. He's our Adam and Eve, our, our Tigris and Euphrates. And that statue, which sits on my family's land, commemorates all that he gave us. You don't get that, well, you're just an ungrateful boob. Yeah. I think in season one, we, you know, explored the Nathan character and this concept of his legacy. We kind of blow it up by the end of the of the season. And you also watch characters like Terry and Regan really level up and get what they've been sort of fighting for for many, many years. And so in season two, it's a real kind of fun exploration of what does it feel like when you're starting from scratch and you have to kind of build a legacy for yourself? And then also what happens when you do have it all and get what you want? And is that sometimes harder than, than having to start over again? Um, we really leaned into the ensemble. I feel like we really got to explore and find out how funny these characters are and different dynamics that we enjoyed and dynamics we hadn't tried yet. And so it's a real sort of, there's a lot of romance and a lot of silliness this year. And I'm just really excited for people to see it. I think that um, comedy is inviting. To generate laughter for people is a gift. I think also, you know, specifically for Native people and Native storylines, we have been relegated to drama historically in this industry. And so it's been actually very fun and easy to elevate us into a, a comedy space and to utilize the, the writing of other Native comedians and non-Native comedians. I always think of this quote from Judd Apatow where he said, when someone's laughing, it's the only time I'm sure that they don't hate me and so, or something like that. I might have butchered it a little bit, but it speaks to a greater beauty and truth about comedy and especially comedic storytelling, which is you can tell stories about awful characters or characters that make awful mistakes. And Nathan certainly is that and Regan is that mm -hmm. at times. And uh, and if but if you're keeping the audience laughing, then they're also kind of empathizing and they're also connecting and they're not hating that that character for making these mistakes. And that's, I think, a very powerful thing that that without articulating it that clearly, we have sort of we have strived for in making Rutherford Falls. One of the details that I love this season, I mean, the show in general is so great and it's, you know, it's it's Sierra uh, spearheading, obviously, but all of the, the writers, there's uh, six Native writers on the staff and all of them as well, like, are reaching out to their communities to bring in art from their various communities and just sort of connections that they have. As an Indigenous actor, you know, frankly, you know, as, a, as an actor of color, I think Hollywood positions us to be sort of, in a way, guardians of, of cultural authenticity. With Rutherford Falls, I was placed in a position where I didn't have to do that. The writing was authentic. The writing came from our communities. So that allowed me to sort of just really be a better actor, to be very clear. All the success, you know, that I've had, um, you know, as an actor being recognized for my work on season one came because uh, Sierra and the rest of the creators uh, were, were shouldering the load. Um, carrying things uh, that would allow Jana, myself, and the other the other Indigenous actors to really um, just level up. Uh, so I'm I'm so grateful for that. I feel like when it comes to Native um, stories on television that's made by non-Native people, there's usually an element of like hold for applause or it just feels like homework and you're just like, oh God. And I, we're like, we always were like, let's avoid kind of feeling, you know, at, at every turn. And, and so in our lives um, as Native storytellers, I find that often 
very complex things will happen to us and they'll be coupled with comedy. And I always was like, if we could just tell our story as we experience it, I think people will not only get a real view into our experience, but they'll also be very entertained and will find it funny. Once Native people are in on the joke, it's, it's a really wonderful experience for, for any viewer coming into the show. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.